Hello, my name is Matthew Bay. I'm an analyst here at Stratford. Today joining me is Dr. Rebecca Keller, one of our technology analysts. So I read an interesting stat today that said that by 2022, electric car vehicles may be cost competitive with gasoline sourced vehicles. So can you kind of elaborate on some of the technologies that are leading to that? Yeah, so we're looking, um, it's it's more the, the manufacturing technologies that are really bringing costs down. So the battery technology that's being used uh, right now is lithium ion batteries. And the, the key advancement that's happened recently is, is the Tesla Gigafactory. So they're producing them on scale, which is bringing the costs down. And that's really the key to any new technology is making it competitive with the old, old technology that's there. So I know that Elon Musk and Tesla are doing the Gigabit Factory. So what other countries do you think could emerge to, you know, to um, challenge that kind of role, trying to be the big supplier of batteries going forward? I think China is a place to really watch. Um, talk about uh, Chile and Bolivia being sources of lithium, but China has its own domestic sources of lithium. So their their tech industry is really moving forward and they're working towards um, domestic developing domestic industries. So that's definitely a place to watch. Okay. So... So you mentioned earlier um, Bolivia and Chile and a couple of people who could actually su um, support with lithium production. Are there any other countries that actually have lithium or are actually we're going to move on to something beyond lithium? So, yes, yeah, so this is the whole, you know, you look at the map of the world back when coal was the, the biggest energy source. And then you had, you know, islands that were extremely important because they were coal uh, fueling stations. And then you moved to oil and the rise of the Middle East. So we don't think that the Andean nations of Chile and Bolivia are going to become the next Middle East. I know you and I have had several discussions about that, yes. um, but it's going to there is going to be an increasing interest in those um, in those areas because they're the cheapest producers of, of lithium right now. But the United States has significant reserves. Australia has significant reserves. We already mentioned China. Um, Brazil has some reserves. So there are other places. But it's still limited reserves. And what we really see in battery technology or any kind of energy storage technology moving forward is moving towards readily available, widely available, extremely cheap materials like sodium or magnesium. So you're, lithium's going to have a relatively short life. Right. At so top. I guess the ultimate question is is it really going to be lithium or is it, could it be sodium to the point where by the time we actually have electric cars making a bigger headwind on time of uh, actually being deployed in the um, vehicle fleet? is it might be 2030, 2040 before it actually becomes a substantial chunk. And by then you might have some of these breakthroughs in alternative um, batteries such as sodium so that we may or may not have lithium ever have its time to shine, basically, so to speak, even though now lithium prices have gone up quite considerably over the last few months just because of the driving increase in um, car batteries and also, of course, grid to go batteries. Right, right. So there's there's a couple of different aspects playing in there. So you've got the, the transportation aspect and you've got the grid storage aspect. There's a lot more competition in grid storage because you're not confined by a space. So you've got the potential for redox flow batteries, which are really easy to scale up because all you have to do is add more liquids. So there's more competition there. Molten salt storage, we've talked about that. Um, over in, in transportation, the lithium batteries really do have that, that first entry benefit because they're going to have the factory set up and you don't really want to switch too much if you've already invested into all of this technology to bring down your manufacturing costs. But eventually, yes, um, lithium will it'll rise, but it will also fall eventually. Right. So another big thing I guess would, would be looking at this is kind of, you know, the bigger, broader implications as we kind of make this transition away from gasoline towards other things. So the big, the big important thing that we're talking about here is transportation fuels. For grid scale stuff for the grid, that's something that, you know, there are already a bunch of alternatives. The reason that oil became so important is because it enabled you to have cars instead of buggies. Right. And that was a huge technology advancement. Lithium doesn't seem to, you know, provide that thing unless we get you know, enough energy so that, you know, personal flying vehicles are a thing. But I don't think we're going to get to that stage. So I think, you know, as we talk about lithium going down, it's not, or lithium uh, going down and oil going down in price, the biggest consequences are going to be, you know, now energy producers in general, whether it be from lithium exports or oil, obviously, are going to that kind of, you know, see their revenues decline and quite substantially. So that's going to have a lot of consequences on the Middle East, for example. Right. And then energy being cheaper, you move into where can manufacturing be and what, what are the factors that play into other other sectors and other And also, on the, on the flip side, while it definitely, you know, reshoring and that kind of idea could happen, it also, also um, puts transportation costs globally down a lot as well. So, so you don't right. necessarily not exactly. have to reshore. So it's, it's all kind of up in the air. Um, but it's going to be a gradual process. Exactly. I mean, it's not going to happen overnight. And I think that's something that needs to be put in perspective sometimes because we think about these, these new technologies, these exciting new technologies, but it takes a really long time. Especially when the average car fleet in the U.S. is, I believe, 10, 10 years old now. So if you just think about that, even if every single car that we sell now is going to be a electric vehicle car, it'll be 10 years before half the car fleet is electric vehicles. And right. then it's going to be even slower in a place like China. So that's one of the reasons I think that 
a quicker pace is actually going to be dependent on um, adoption being almost forced upon by governments through regulation. So I know the car standards in the U.S. are just going up pretty, pretty high. And elsewhere around the world, that's definitely the case, including places like China. Right. And I mean, in Europe, you're seeing difficulty with countries like Germany getting people to buy enough electric mm-hmm. vehicles to meet their goals. So you you see countries with, with significant incentives to, to buy these vehicles, and that's going to be needed as well, still moving forward. I believe now something around 23 to 30%, somewhere around that ballpark of the new cars that are being sold in Norway are all electric cars. So that's kind of, wow. you know, a, a country that's actually taking it by the horn and kind of and run with it. Really run with it. Absolutely. It's really interesting. We've got a lot to watch moving forward. For this and more, please visit us at stratfor.com.